The siege of Pulpuldeva was a miserable affair. The Talistabogi holed up in the mountains were prepared for a siege, and the weather stole us no favours either. The army of Magariks endured months of rain and fog, disease and pestilence, and repeated raids by the defending tribesmen, many of whom had scattered into the hills at our approach, rather than retreating within the walls. On several occasions, Magariks made parley with their chieftain, offering terms which were repeatedly refused. The enemy were harbouring refugee members of the Adrissian royal family, among them the nobles responsible for the slaughter of the Galatian army at Edessos. There was apparently little love lost between the Talistabogi of the mountains and their kinsmen in Anatolia, for they had sided with the perpetrators of Galatia's worst defeat since the Battle of the Elephants. Once again, my engineering skills were called upon. I oversaw the initial construction of a multitude of great wheeled towers, based upon a design I had procured at great expense from an inventor in Syracuse which would permit our warriors to assault the walls of Pulpuldeva in force, without relying on ladders as they had done in previous assaults. I say it was the initial phase of construction, however, for I was not present for the latter half of the siege, including the bloody battle on the walls which took place upon the enemy chieftain's final refusal of King Magarix's demands. As the final preparations were being made, I instead found myself, along with my wife, upon a vessel bound for Ostia, the port of Rome itself. My mission was twofold. Firstly, I intended to pay a visit to the Cornelius family estate and make an accounting of the wealth I had sent to its coffers over the years. Secondly, and in a more circumspect fashion, I was to gauge the mood in the city among the senatorial class, for tensions to the east were high. Rome's war with Ptolemy of Egypt was proceeding apace, with the legions marching closer and closer to Alexandria, meeting little resistance. Meanwhile in Greece, Rome's erstwhile allies of convenience in the form of the King of Illyria and his subjects were becoming deeply unhappy with the state of affairs on the peninsula, as the Romans continued to do little else but provoke their neighbours, seemingly champing at the bit for an excuse to subjugate Greece under the guise of ostensibly liberating it. The King of Illyria had entertained Magarix himself in secret at one of his many villas in Thessalia, and between the two of them an understanding had formed that if Galatia held designs upon the Roman-held cities of Greece, Illyria would not aid them, but crucially, neither would they hinder them. I had of course counselled caution at this news, for insatiable as Rome's lust for glory and wealth may be, the duplicitous Illyrians hardly made for much better bedfellows. In truth, I also felt deeply conflicted at heart. By this time I had lived for many years in Galatia. I held land and titles, commanded troops and was husband to a Galatian noblewoman. But in all this time, I had not considered myself any less of a Roman patriot. The eternal, entrepreneurial quest for glory is the very bedrock of what it is to be Roman, and I had in my way convinced myself that this and more is precisely what I had achieved, even if it was abroad and not upon the Capitoline Hill itself. Upon my arrival in the city, however, I was disabused of this fantasy. Upon my arrival at the family estate, I was met only by the household slaves, and shortly afterwards was given an audience with my now elderly mother. Her demeanour was frosty, to put it mildly, although my own disposition became hot as the very forge of Vulcan himself, and I discovered to my horror that the coffers were empty. All the gold and wealth I had sent back to Rome under guard had either been squandered by the flippant whims of my own mother, or given wholesale to my cousin Scipio, who spent the sum total of nearly three quarters of it upon his own political and military ambitions. Suffice to say, I had not been consulted, and the rest of the family had made out like common bandits at my expense. Had my wife Actia not restrained me with a hushed but furious glance, I might have thrown my own mother into the streets and gone marching towards the Senate House with a dagger in hand. For her part, Actia had endured the visit with a tremendous grace and dignity to which I can only aspire myself. The muttered insults, cries and withering looks she received from my compatriots during our stay would test the temper of the most patient sage, but she retained her composure throughout. We left the city not long afterwards, on the swiftest vessel I could procure, headed directly for the port of Byzantium, with the view, in my mind, that if Rome should burn, 
I would not be caught spilling so much as a cup of wine upon the conflagration. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back once again to Rome 2 Total War, the Galatian campaign, where at the moment we're uh, about to go to war very briefly once again against, yes, the Odrysians again. Um, I don't feel very happy about these guys. We made peace with them. We left them in this kind of little rump state out here. Um, but I've decided I just can't trust them and I need to destroy them. I just can't turn my back on them for five seconds. I want to be off marching into Greece soon to try and take Larissa and Apollonia when we declare war on Rome. And I don't feel like I can do that with these two stacks of Adrissians hanging around on my border. Um, I've started recording now because something has changed which has made an attack now relatively good looking. Um, which is that previously for the last few turns they had both their armies stacked up on the border here. And I knew that if I was going to attack them, particularly since this looks like it might be uphill... It was going to be kind of rough. I was trying to figure out how I was going to do it. I was starting to think about sending Kakstos on a little journey around out here to sort of attack their uh, their last remaining city from the north. Uh, but then during the end turn, they moved one of their armies back to their capital, and now they have a single stack here that I can gang up on, which is nice. Um, so yeah, we're going to finish off the Idrisians. I didn't really necessarily want to have to do this, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway because I can't trust the buggers. They hate me. I can't get a non-aggression pact or anything with them. So that's that. Um, there are relatively few uh, other diplomatic developments going on. Um, the Skordiski, obviously, they occupy the lands on the other side of the Danube. I have managed to secure a non-aggression pact with them. Quite happy about that because I don't want to have to be dealing with people coming across the Danube to attack me if I, if, if I can help it. It's notoriously difficult. Uh, stretch of land to defend as the Romans found out in real life um, so I don't want to have to be expending the resources on having a garrison up here all the time so if I can keep the Skodiski happy I would like that to be the case uh, over in the east Bithynia has been wiped out um, Colchis have marched in and taken that the Caucasus kind of region is, 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 is a bit of a mess still Parthia's got this settlement, Atropatkin's got this one, Colchis has got thi this, Arsamosata, Trapezos, and Sinope, but Meshan has got Amasea for some reason. Um, it's it's a bit of a mess. Um, there's a bit of Bactria over there, um, and there, and Atropatkin's down here in Seleucia, and Meshan's down here in Charax. It's a really fragmented, horrible mess of border gore over in the east at the moment, and I want nothing to do with any of it, frankly. Luckily, I have a non-aggression pact with Colchis, my new neighbours over here, um, and uh, hopefully uh, no, there will be no wars with them. Meanwhile, I've got Britomaras making the long march all the way over to Egypt. Uh, I was going to take him by boat, but then I decided I didn't want to because I couldn't figure out a way to get him there without taking attrition. Um because I, I don't seem to be able to build supply ships um, as the Galatians, which is a little bit irritating. So I'm marching him the long way around, um, you know, through the Levant um, into Egypt that way. Uh, speaking of Egypt, uh, the Ptolemies are not having a very good time against the Romans. The Romans have taken Cyrene and, um, and Libya and all of this, really. Um, there are stones throw away from Alexandria itself. Um, Preto has been keeping an eye on things. Uh, last I saw, the Roman faction leader was hanging out over here, although he seems he's moved now. Um, it's not its not looking great for them. I think uh, Britomaros is arriving just in time, hopefully. Um, on the bright side, the Ptolemies have been clearing the Mediterranean of pirates again, as usual. Um, there was a pirate fleet milling around here, and the Ptolemies came out and sunk it in pretty short order. Good for them. I do also officially have a defensive alliance with the Ptolemies now, which is why I'm able to see all of their territory without it being in fog of war. So I now have a proper defensive alliance with the Ptolemies and with the uh, Lyrians, the RDIAE, who have the most irritating to pronounce faction name in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and that's that's how things are looking, basically. If we go to the diplomatic view, um, that's how we're looking. We've got our little tripartite defensive alliance sort of thing going on here. Um, and then there's Rome. I don't know if I can figure out where to get the RDIA to join me in attacking Rome. Welcome, worthy friend. Let us break bread I might be able to give them lots of money to try and join war against lips. Rome once it kicks off, but no matter what I do, they will not accept a military alliance. Um, 
I can offer them all the gold in the world and it's still chance of success low so I don't know why they're not into it but they're not into it for some reason we have fantastic relations though I mean 176 posit in the positive with these guys even the Ptolemies don't like us that much um, they won't accept a military alliance either in case you're wondering so yeah whatever I've noticed that Pergamon will accept a military alliance um, for a rather a large amount of money um Fine. Athena give you wisdom look. so that you may speak well and persuade me of your cause. Be welcome. For 16 odd grand. Um, let's see if I can. No, there's no, there isn't a good way to do this without massively overpaying them, unfortunately. Could try that. There we go. I, I suppose I could part with 11 grand for a military alliance. Thing is, it won't... Will... I suppose that's not really getting me much in the end because I think they're already at war with Rome, aren't they? But, um, yeah, they are. But at least we're making it official, I suppose. Um, and they can help us out. We can set war goals and things. Um, and that sort of thing. You know, it's they've got two stacks of relatively decent Greek infantry and whatnot. You know, it wouldn't hurt to have them around, I suppose. So Pergamon's on our team now as well. Um, funny, really. I, I kind of set out when I started this series to with, with, with a short-term goal of destroying Pergamon because Pergamon kind of kicked the Galatians' ass in real life and I wanted to return the favour. But... Uh, They've turned out to be useful allies so far, so I guess that's the way the cookies crumbled today, so Yeah, that's the way things are looking and now I'm gonna uh, Go ahead and declare war on these guys. Um, this might lose me a bit of reliability foolish, to be honest bad. Well speak. I will listen before I turn you inside I will out. not call my allies to help on this particular occasion. You don't have any allies of your own, do you? No, they don't have a lot of friends either, really. The Skordisky kind of like them, I guess, but... Yeah, that's pretty much it. You're out of friends, Od Odrason. And you're out of time as well, so... Our warriors will march, and our women will prepare the victory feast for their return. Yeah, sure, dude, whatever you say. Um, that small thing on the military side to note. Uh, the thorax reforms occurred, which is another sort of sort of global reform that happens throughout the Greek world, which includes the Galatians, which means we now have access to Galatai Thorakitai, Galatian Thorax Infantry, equipped with the latest armor advancements. These men have served in the armies of various Diodoki kings and Greek city-states. Learning from that experience, they have brought their new expertise home. These are very, very, very good heavy infantry. Um, I mean, I'm comparing them to the noble swordsmen right now, the chosen swordsmen. They've got better armor. Uh, same melee defense and attack. Um, they've got a few other extra abilities I'm noticing at the bottom there. They've got better morale. Um, they also have javelins, it looks like. You know, they've got ammunition one there. Reform the line, defensive formation, campaign stealth, which is interesting. Uh, disciplined as well. Student does not suffer a morale penalty when the general dies. It's not bad. Uh, they, they, are, they do come from a very... Uh, small strata of the population available though so I'm not able to really spam these guys very much um, it probably could if I were recruiting back home in Enkira because the pop population there is pretty huge nowadays but uh, out here in the sticks very difficult to recruit very many units of these guys but they are just really rather excellent um, so we've got a unit of those in Kaxtos's army and in Magarex's as well so anyway speaking of which oh he's running away he's run back to his city you plonker um he's in the city i could get kaxtos to pin him down who would be better at dealing with him in the open field he's got loads of slingers and kaxtos has loads of cavalry he's got loads of javelin too all right magrix oh i don't think he can get there though that's the problem i don't think either of them can actually uh, there may not be a particularly easy way to do this. Um, yeah, we just don't have quite enough movement points, do we? I wanted us. I wanted to pin down uh, this this army in the city, and then take these guys out with Caxos's cavalry army. But that's probably not going to happen, is it? I mean, either way. They're, they're pretty, a couple of fairly weak looking armies. Lots of projectiles, annoyingly, but yeah, there it is. 
Okay, um, what's this gonna have to do for now? Uh, why don't you, Bueno Dotia, do a bit of army sabotage? They've got Macri Doria Gamma, that's probably their general's unit, right? It's like their one decent unit they've got. Uh, harass. Causes casualties from the single unit of an enemy army. Cunning based. Uh, give it a try. Try and, try and kill some of his bodyguards. Failed. When I don't you. Get it together, lass. Come on. I've, I, I know you can do better. Anyway, folks. Uh, it, unfortunately, that's it. We're going to have to hit end turn, I think. Um, so we may end up having a 2v2 two 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 field battle out here in the hills and in the forest. Which is not really what I wanted, but um, we might just have to take it. The annoying thing is, they might bring up the town garrison as well, in which case I'm gonna I'm gonna be outnumbered. Hardly outgunned, but outnumbered. Yes, less than ideal, but I'm sure we can probably still fight our way through it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hit the end turn button, and they decided to attack us. So here we go. Uh, we've got. Our guys on this side will be starting off in command of Magrix, and then we've got Kaxtos reinforcing against three stacks. This should be fun. Um, on the bright side, it seems like an awful lot of their army is dreadfully cheap and terrible looking levy units. So, we're outnumbered, but I don't know. I mean, these Thracian warriors here look like they could, could be kind of scary. Actually, that's, that's quite a lot of bones with the big... Uh, what are they called? Rum fires, I think. The two-handed ones like that. Um, that's They are a little bit concerning, I suppose. But the rest of it is a lot, a lot of cheap levies and peltasts and things. And, uh, well, we'll see how we get on. All right, folks. Uh, I've deployed, kind of. Um, say hello to the Thorax infantry. Don't they look pretty darn cool? They sort of, uh, they, look, they, they, they remind me of the Noble Swordsman, just a little bit fancier. They've got fancier helmets, by and large, it seems like to me. These big shields, and then they've got javelins in addition to, uh, I think probably short, short swords, I want to say. They're probably armed with once they've ditched the javelins. It's sort of like, uh, vaguely similar to Roman legionaries, I think, is the general idea. So, um, they look pretty darn cool. Um, so here's how, kind of how things are looking right now. Um... Very frustratingly, um, apparently Kaxtos and his boys are going to come on from over all the way over here for some reason. Um, we were practically right next to each other on the campaign map, but apparently I started off over here, and Kaxtos is coming in all the way over here in the at the edge of the enemy's deployment zone, which is f well, you know, that's that's extremely bloody frustrating and and difficult to deal with. Uh, so we're going to have to sort of I've deployed everybody kind of in one half of an army here, really, essentially. I mean. Um, I've got a reserve of Thurius infantry. I've got the spearman shield wall at the front with the uh, the thorax guys and the noble swordsman on each flank there. I've got two units of naked fanatics on this flank, and then I've got cavalry out on the far right flank. Um, there's Magrix right here on his on his with his mounted bodyguards. I've got the baggage train. I've got some archers, and I think I'm going to try and just sort of rush over here to meet up with Kaxtos as quick as possible and then maybe we can fight on this slight kind of slope here as the enemy comes at us, maybe, I guess is what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bit hectic. So let's go. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have to click drag this, I think, to make it work. Um, go. Okay, Kaxtos and his lads are arriving. That's good. Uh, I'm going to need these to come up here, I think. Um, there's his chariots. The enemy is over here. Now, they'll probably take a minute to sort of link up and try and get all their stuff together as well. So I think we might have a minute or two here to spare in order to get everything kind of sorted out. Um, I need to get the cavalry together, really, don't I? But I'm, I'm sort of... Elite cavalry! It's difficult to pick out which cavalry units I would need here. Uh, let's get you guys over that way. Here we go, we got some heavy spearmen. We can 
String you guys out like that. More Thurious infantry. Man, the unit cards are an absolute mess, aren't they? Thurious guys in reserve. I think we're going to need reserves today. Uh, we've got slingers. Slingers can go up here on the hill. And chariots can go up here behind the front line as well. Just to chuck their javelins. Uh, have I got another unit of spearmen here that I didn't... Yeah, looks like I do. You guys need to go there. Do I have any spare naked fanatics on this left flank? I don't think I do, but I do have the extra unit of thorax infantry. You boys can go on that left flank as well, I suppose. Okay. I think that's more or less every... Oh, except for the baggage train here. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to squeeze you guys in in the back here somewhere. Like that. Okay, I think that's everybody. Everybody has their places now. They've got somewhere to be. It's Caxtos and his cavalry boys. Uh, let's send these guys up to meet them. Let's have a big cavalry blob. Let's go all Pelennor Fields on these guys' asses right now. A lot of them are milling around in the trees at the moment, which is not great, because obviously that, mm, I think, if I recall, trees massively slow our movement speed, which is not good for cavalry, so... a little while uh, since I last played a battle in this. Um, actually, no, it hasn't been that long, but i tell you what it has been. A mix lately of this and, um, and Attila. And these games are so similar, but actually crucially different in a few different ways. Um, and it can bloody trip you up sometimes. And one of the, one of the differences is, is the way that woods and forests work, because I don't think they slow you down as much in Attila, but what they do is provide missile cover, but they don't in this... So it's a little bit, uh... Yeah, I have to double-check sometimes. <sighs> anyway. What are they all doing? Are they going to meet up with these guys? Looks like it. What have we got here? Thracian militia. Lots of Thracian militia. Thracioi haploi, which... I think is just, to be honest with you, another flavour of like, Thracian militia. They've got, like, what? These little crescent cowhide shields and some axes. Yeah, they'll get chewed up and spat out by um, our elite Gallic warriors over here, I think. Yeah, the Thorax guys are going to just, just make mincemeat out of them, but they're, they, we are pretty heavily outnumbered, so... Got to be careful. Also, what is this baggage train doing with its life right now? I... 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 What? Come on, guys. They're a flippin' heck. Uh, Alright, once you guys have gotten through the front there, I'm going to put everybody here in shield ball formation. Got a unit of thorax there in the middle. Alright, boys. Get in formation. Big water spears pointed towards the enemy, if you please. Right now, what's the enemy going to do? They've got skirmisher cavalry, which are going to be piss irritating to deal with. Seem to be sending some of their guys up forward here, though. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Let's see if we can give them a little charge here. What's that? Peltasts. Elite cavalry. We have no fear. That's us. Well, you guys want to take on my lancers? Be my guest. No, you're going to run away, aren't you? Unless you guys want to have a go. Can we catch them, do you think? We have discovered the enemy's hidden unit. All right, meanwhile. We already have some wavering enemies. That's always great to see. They are chucking a lot of javelins at us, though, aren't they? Alright guys, let's cycle charge. It's gonna take some cash if he's doing this, I'm quite sure, but we don't want to get bogged down out there. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Thank you, Marcus. Cavalry. 
Yeah, the Jav Cab are going to be very irritating today. Luckily, they've only got so many Javelins, they can't keep it up forever. Alright, they want to follow you. Let them do it. What are those guys? Tracheoi, Haploi. No, these are Berisades or something. I'm not sure what they are. They've got some spears, which is concerning, I suppose. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. try and keep harassing these guys as they advance towards our main line, I suppose. I don't know how effective it is, but I'm giving it a go. Uh, try and grab those guys. Wheeling around on our flank there. Don't like that. Don't appreciate it. All right, I think our slingers are starting to open up on them. Good. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Okay. Defensive formation on the thorax, guys. Actually, I should remember to do that. All right, we got them pinned in place. Good, good, good. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Guys, are these guys getting wiped out the way they should? Yeah, they're taking a lot of casualties. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Yeah, the, the Rodian slingers are doing some work. I like nice, like to see it. Alright. I don't want you guys getting surrounded here. Even if it is by trash units. Wavering. Who's wavering? Who the fuck is wavering? I did not give anybody permission Elite to start wavering. Gotcha. Ready for Who's wavering? I have no idea. Whatever. I try and get back through the main front line. That's messy, but I don't know what else to do. Our men are fl Who's running away? I'm so goddamn confused. What's the problem here? Who's running away? I'm being told that my men are running away and I'm not seeing it anywhere. Let's send these noble swordsmen up a little bit and support them with these guys. Sons of God! Galatians! I can only assume some of my cavalry were running away, maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I think some of the cavalry over here is running for it, yeah. I don't know where for them to go because, unfortunately, the arbitrary red line of doom is behind us. Where's Magrix in the middle of all of this? I really hope that uh, Caxton's isn't running away anywhere. Oh, there he is, right. Yeah, he's managed to get to safety. That's good. Where's Caxton? I mean, Magrix, he's here. Oh, wait, no, no, no. There's fine, dude. There is fine. Alright, scent is holding quite nicely, I think, by the looks of things. really need to try and do is do a bit of flanking but that's hard because I had so many of the cavalry out harassing at the beginning rather than in reserve I was hoping we'd kill more than we did in the end really one of our units has used all its ammunition maybe we can start rolling up the flanks on this side 
with what we've got left. Chariots, potentially I could use, but I just, they're so damn fragile. In my experience, I'd rather not unless we have to. Okay, that's one of their three generals dead. That's a good start. Uh, okay, okay, we've got some of the cab over here. I didn't notice you guys. That's good. Let's try and get your position right around the back there. Um, and honestly, the fanatics can help flank as well because they're they're good at that. Honestly, they're quite quick. They're not cavalry, but they're quite quick. They can do that. One of our units has used all its ammunition. All right, you boys, into the back of that mob. You would. Right, naked fanatics in the rear. That's not going to be good for your health. In fact, oh, I think they're already legging it. Hey, brilliant. Something's going over here. I think the enemy's not having a fun time, as I would sum that up. blob of enemies that I'd really like to get a rear charge into. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Okay. They've still got annoying Jav Cav harassing us, but... No, 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 not you. Not you. You keep going this way. Try and run those guys down, I suppose. We'll kill them all. They will bleed for us. Anybody here Infantry. got any javelins yet left? Because now would be a great time to throw them at these guys. Right, I'll just try and pin those guys down. They've gone a bit stuck in those woods. Infantry, yes, kick their asses. I feel like you guys took uh, actually not as many casualties as I thought, but they've lost just under 50 of their guys. They look like more, but I guess they're, they're so tightly bunched up, these boys, that it looks like there's fewer of them than there actually are. Get to charge off into them. Look at guys, the Cappadocians are actually being useful. It doesn't happen very often. And yeah, they're broken and routing. Just need to route what's left of these guys now. Oh, we've got a unit. Our men flee the field of battle. Yeah, that's another unit of cavalry legging it because I lost track of them. No big deal. It happened in real life too, quite a, quite a lot actually. So it's only realistic, really. All right. I think flee the field of battle. This is a shameful display. We need to bring you boys up. Shield wall advance. Quite satisfying to watch, isn't it? The old shield wall at work. Men flee the field of battle. This is a shame. Guys, could you stop running away? We're winning. It's embarrassing. Oh, what are they doing over here? They sent the jav cab in to flank and try and attack my archers. I think. No, no. Who was that? Please. Well, it won't have been Magarix. I guess Kaxtos has had it. That's really. Oh God, I wish I'd been paying more attention. Never mind. How annoying. Oh well. Man died as he lived. Kicking ass. 
from horseback. Stop running away! Fucking hell! There's one of their generals there. Why won't the enemy just give it up, honestly, at this point? They're, they're getting our asses handed to them. They just won't give up and run away. They've still got more crap milling around out the back there. Give it up, Adrissians. You've lost. Pack it in, boys. You've had it. Just surrender. The next guy's going in. I like the uh, color-coordinated blue cloaks, actually. That's kind of neat. I just noticed that. Everyone else, nobody else in the army really does that. Forget about defensive formation. Just get stuck in. bumping up against here exactly because these guys are, they seem very stubborn this is peltasts we're fighting right now that are refusing to run away unbelievable we have discovered the enemy's hidden units well, they're bringing up more up here, I guess. Alright, Magrix, you can come up as well. Uh, mostly for moral support. I don't feel like risking you right now. Please kill these guys faster. My Thorax infantry is supposed to be amazing. They are wavering now. Okay, there we go. Alright. You, you, go, you guys over there to help over there. Because you guys have gotten a little bit surrounded now, haven't you? Surrounded by trash units as usual, but uh. Okay, that's enemy general number two down. At long last. Come on, boys. Another push. So we can finally get these guys to leg it and run away. Yeah, I think I'm going to send Magrix up here to charge down some of these Peltasts and stuff. Pop and Inspire. In our I think it turned in our favour a while ago, if I'm honest with you, Marcus. Right, Thracian bowmen, for goodness sake. Run them down, for crying out loud. We have discovered the enemy's hidden units. Okay, they are wavering. Routing. Our general is under attack. Oh, just, just don't, don't. Our general is. You had me in the first half there, Marcus. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll be honest. I was watching those javelins go flying through the air and thinking to myself, surely that couldn't happen. Man, they're stubborn, aren't they? They just will not retreat. Or withdraw or rout or anything. Elite cavalry! Ah! At least you can run these guys down for a second. We are gold. It is rare to see an enemy army this goddamn stubborn, frankly. It's a bit like I feel like I'm playing on a higher difficulty level today or, so, or something, you know. And the enemies getting morale bonuses. Morale cheats, basically. I'm 
not seeing a lot of flags left. Uh, it's this blob over here really is the problem. They need to be dealt with. The rest of their army is basically legging it. Of course, I think it seems like the enemy is largely down to skirmishes and missile units, so they're just going to keep running away. But not in the we've lost the battle way, in the tactical withdrawal sort of way. Oh, yeah, and all the jav cab as well. I love that. Ugh. Let's if I can corral them a little bit with Magrix here. This is giving me flashbacks to Rome 1. The OG Rome Total War, whenever you had to fight the goddamn Scythians or Numidians, it was always this crap. How do you guys still have ammo? This is the find of part I find probably the most objectionable, is the fact that these bastards still somehow have ammunition. Taking so many casualties. Run these guys down, please. Yeah, okay, they're wavering. They're wavering. Looks like our infantry are arriving just in time. You guys get stuck in there. Rally Inspire. We'll We've done it. There we go, finally. Oh. Man alive. There it is, folks. Uh, they deployed 11,000. We deployed 7,500. They lost 7,600. We lost 1,700. We have about just shy of 6,000 men remaining. They have just shy of just shy of 4,000 remaining, and we killed 4,000 men to their 1,600. That's pretty darn good. Um, unfortunately, Kaxtos is dead. He is dead. I'm afraid. Yes, indeed. Quite, quite dead. Um, along with our, our cavalry, have just been absolutely battered and annihilated. Um, the best of our cab are just gone, um, unfortunately. Some of the, some of the, the, the lancers were um, were not very good, actually. These guys were okay. The ones in Magarex's outfit, though, they, they they managed to kill 23 men and almost got entirely annihilated. In fact, they were. They've, the, the, the the unit card background is red, which means that the unit is basically deleted. Um, the infantry, the the the, the, the foot sluggers, the uh, they 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 did they did great. Obviously, they've taken very few casualties and they've doled out plenty of hurt. Um, the not not so much the shield wall guys because they were basically just holding the line, but got plenty of kills in the process for virtually no losses, which is great. Um, the reserve Thurius infantry have done fine. Um, the thorax infantry have done excellently. They've lost very few and killed quite a lot. Especially the ones in Magrex's army, those guys. 281 men killed for, you know, just a fraction of a loss there. They lost 70 guys um, for a frontline infantry unit that was not chasing down routing enemies. That's a very impressive kill count, i got to say. I'm very happy with the Thorax infantry. They are excellent. The um, the Noble Swordsmen have done superbly, though. Um, they're, they're up to two Silver Chevrons now, and they killed 420 men. In, in that battle. I kind of lost them in the shuffle, really, in the midst of all that, but I know that we're one of the units that came in on the right flank after the enemy's right flank collapsed alongside the uh, the Naked Fanatics. Um, speaking of which, this unit has been lost over nearly over half its guys. I think and most of that was probably to Javelin Fire. But they killed or captured 613 enemies, which is bonkers good. So, uh, yes... A uh, lot of enemy units deleted, as you can see. They ain't done yet, but we've 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 got them on the ropes. That's for damn sure. Um, kill captives, enslave them, or ransom them. I'm leaning.
aiming towards enslave or kill. To be honest with you, I'll enslave them. Right. Uh, now we're back into the rest of the end turn sequence, and then... Uh, yeah, I guess we're going to figure out who's going to be in charge of that army now that Kaxtos has finally kicked the bucket. Wow. I, um... I didn't plan for him to die, but, uh... He kind of went out like a boss, I suppose. In a very, very crucial battle with, with us hopelessly outnumbered by the enemy, and he kicked some ass, and we won the day. His sacrifice was not in vain. I wish I'd been a little more careful with him, though. How many times must I tell you I don't want advice, game? Right. Caxtos' claws has forced needs new leadership. Now its commander is gone. Who will answer the call? That is the question. Sukamo, Vercasivalonus, uh, Adkoro, or Aarkos? Uh, well, Adkoro is one of our guys. He's Tectosiges, isn't he? So... The Trogmai are going to be kind of pissed, though, because their uh, their their faction leader died, which isn't great. But this Adkoro, he isn't going to cost us anything, so that's something. I think we'll give him the yeah, we'll give him the standard bodyguard cav. Ready for battle, Adkoro. Who are you? You're one of our other nobles, aren't you? Who are you married to? You're not married to anybody. I don't remember exactly where this guy's from. I think he's just one of the, the a bit like Yaros. He's one of the one sort of just young up and coming chieftains in the tribe that just apparent appeared via event. So uh, let's get you married off, my dude. Uh, he's married to Bana, apparently. And yes, Kangstos has died. This noble warrior has died valiantly, valiantly in battle tonight. He dines with the glorious dead, but who will lead his warriors? Yeah, at Koro will apparently. Enemies, champions, raids of harassment, diminished your troops. That's annoying. Mission successful. Oh, completely controlled two provinces. Yeah, that took us long enough, didn't it? <laughs> well, we got some bonus cash in the treasury for that. And then objective mission issued two. If you wish for peace, prepare for war. Maintain 60 units in total. We must have already done that by now, surely. Uh, it's weird. Our expansion has been extremely weird. We should have probably been controlling two whole provinces ages ago, but because of the way we've expanded, it hasn't really happened. It's kind of odd. But anyway, Adkoro is now married to Banner. That's this lass here. Influential woman, aristocrat, cheerful. Adkoro, for his part, he is noble. A noble, rather. He is a labourer by trade. Interesting. Histrionic. Sentimental, melodramatic, and flamboyant. Oh, dear. Well, he's a scrapper, deputy student, so nothing nothing particularly outstanding here. He's got a quick limed head, a shield maiden wife, plus two loyalty from marriage, plus two chance of having children, plus two percent morale for all units. That's pretty sweet. Uh, ex slumlord and a personal tutor. Yeah, what can we give him that would be better? Like tattooed madman, perhaps? Heroic warrior. Or indeed, naked fanatic. Yeah, you can have a naked naked fanatic. Why not? Okay. Ready for orders. Um, I think Nysos is pretty much ours for the taking now. Thirsty for battle. Uh, we're a bit battered and bruised, but let's do this. I may auto resolve this, to be honest with you. In circle, and then. There we go. Auto resolve. Uh, what would give us the most remaining units? I think balanced will do. Overwhelm the defenders of the city. Those of them that hadn't already fled into the hills, like a couple of those little stacks did. We lost 1,600 men in the assault, and. Uh, yeah, but we've taken it, and that's that faction completely eliminated now, aside from any armies they have running around in the hills. Uh, we will, of course, be looting it, because that's just what we do. For battle. And Basileon Odrison has been destroyed. Excellent. Uh, in one fell swoop, they didn't have any remaining armies. I love it. And, uh, yeah, how are we just going to 
repair the damn place and get it all fixed up and what have you, but that is a faction eliminated. That means we do now control all of Thrace. All of Thrace is ours now. Every single damn last settlement makes me immensely happy to say that. Um, and we are on right now very good terms with both our neighbours over here, the uh, the Illyrians and also the Skordiski to the north on the other side of the Danube. God knows how long it'll stay that way, but for the moment, as you can see on the diplomacy map here, we're on pretty good terms with both of them. So that I like to see. The only people in the world who really, really hate us at the moment are, of course, the Romans. And I guess uh, Meshan doesn't seem to like us very much either, but I'm not very worried about them, I'll be honest. Uh, right, let's see. First thing I need to do, make sure I remember to do every turn, is move Britomaros a little step further towards um, <laughs> Alexandria. Okay, that's done for this turn. I'm starting to think I should have sent maybe more than one stack down there, actually. But I guess our job down here is mostly just to help uh, the Ptolemies rather than actually carve out a chunk of Africa for ourselves so I'll just kind of maybe follow their army around and assist them whenever I can but um, yeah there we go so that is that is Thrace subdued and conquered at last um, I'm very happy about that um, the, the Thracians aren't so happy about that they've got they've got minus 30 public order right now but they'll only last for well, like a turn. Yeah, Conquest next turn only minus 40, so yeah, I'll we'll be back in positive public order very shortly, which is good. Um, yeah, now we that, that, that was the final thorn in my side removed, and now I can actually seriously put some thinking and planning into how we're going to deal with Rome, and how we're going to deal with Rome, I think, is we're just going to march straight past Pella through uh, the Illyrian territory, and then attack Larissa, and maybe Apollonia at the same time. I, I have a Belios creeping around at the moment in Roman held Greece and I'm not seeing any armies here I gotta say they could be here but um, even when I do the old established intelligence network here I'm, I'm not seeing it I'm not seeing any Romans so they'll obviously react to us doing this once they once we attack them but uh, it, mm, we could end up taking Roman Greece very quickly before they really know what the heck's going on. It's weird, actually, to be honest with you. The Romans have taken so much territory, and yet their armies are weirdly elusive. I really have been struggling to find out where, in God's name, they've actually been keeping their troops. I have Preto running backwards and forwards over here, constantly trying to figure out where the Romans are, and yet, you know, you go searching around, and you just can't find them. It's very odd. What's this over here? Kidri. They're a faction from all the way over here, and for some reason they are starving to death in the middle of Egypt. Goodness knows what that what's that about. Um You at war with the Kidri or something? I don't think you are. You're on pretty good terms with them. I don't know what the heck's going on over there. Nab Nab Nabatea are down here as well. They're actually a playable faction, Nabatea. I've never played as them, don't know much about them. Um they have a quite an interesting and challenging starting location, though, I'll say that much. Um, right, ladies and gents, uh, that'll do it for now. I shall return when things have developed. <laughs>